To the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com Modern Open in Baltimore, part of the SCG Tour, brought to you by Ultimate Guard. I'm Nick Miller alongside Brennan DeCandio, number one in the seasonal rankings right now. Yes. Part of that thanks to a back-to-back -back open win. Started off pretty strong. And then uh, you've had a couple other strong finishes as of late, too, coming off the top eight at the Team Open just last weekend. Yep. And now you're here playing a deck that your friend, Brad Carpenter, won yep. the Classic with, mm -hmm. and you traveled with him this weekend. Uh, this weekend and last weekend. We had a long car drive to Louisville. We talked a lot about the deck going into the weekend. And I wanted to play this deck then, uh, before he even won the Classic. But he won the Classic, and he's like, that was the easiest tournament I've ever played in. So. I was like, all right, well, I'll give it a shot. And I've been testing online this week, and it's been great. So. Right. Encounters Company is the deck we're talking about. And this is the deck that's kind of the evolution of Abzan Company, you know, with the Malira and all that. But we've changed, thanks to Amonkhet, yes. we have Vizier of Remedies, which does the broken combo with Devoted Druid. Correct. And now people saw this card, you know, kind of like they saw Felidar Guardian at the end of the spoiler season. Right. This innocuous uncommon. And yeah, now it you know, ports I mean, into this modern deck very right. well. Yeah, it, it basically, I think this is just a new Abzan Company deck, not the counter, it just, it's the de facto at this point, I think. I don't think anyone's playing the old version of the deck. But no, the fact that uh, Devoted Druid is uh, just infinite mana on turn three or two if you're playing Simeon Spirit Guide. With Vizier, it means you have a myriad of options to try and kill your opponent with that much mana, uh, especially like that early in the game. And you have a lot of ways to do it that are just also good in a kind of toolbox deck that has a value creatures in it, so. Right, and now the old school Absent Company decks kind of just revolved around Kitchen Finks, right. Malira or Anafenza, plus Viscera Seer, mm -hmm. and then that deck had a bunch more kind of one ofs in the main deck. Whereas this build eschews the bunch of one ofs, you only have a couple one of tutor targets for this combo where you also have the Infinite Life combo, right. but you'll now have the Vizier and the Devoted Druid along with kind of the new way to kill right. Walking Ballista plus Dust Watch Recruiter. Take us through how the deck. Functions. Walking Ballista in every format, that's all. Right. No, the deck functions uh, very similar to the old deck. Uh, the only difference for this one is that you do need an unsummoning sick devoted druid to kill them. That is like the kind of drawback to this deck as opposed to the other ones, which could kill regardless of summoning thickness. Um, but a very simple line of play involves, if you have everything obviously, uh, devoted druid on turn two, vizier of remedies on turn three, use it in infinite mana to either court of calling or just if you have either dust watch recruiter or walking ballista kill your opponent. You can Recruiter for your entire deck, you find a Ballista, infinite mana, shoot them infinite times. Uh, Court of Calling uh, with Devoted Druid is just infinite combo, on, infinite mana on turn three, because you have uh, the three lands, you can tap, then untap Devoted Druid the real way, uh, and get five mana to Court for two, with combination of an Eternal Witness or another Cord gets the Recruiter as well, and that also wins the game. But you do also have the backup plan, like you said, of just the old thing where you had Viserys here, Kitchen Finks, and Vizier Remedies, which plays the Malyra slash uh, Anapenza role as well. well. When in doubt, gain infinite life. Not a bad thing. A lot of modern decks except, can't beat that. Except yet. on Magic Online. That's pretty bad there. Sure. We're in real life here, so we don't yes. have to worry about Magic Online. Now, this deck, you know, outside of the combo pieces we just mentioned, is kind of the seven one-mana, you know, mana creatures mm -hmm. along with Devoted Druid. So you kind of have this accelerate into Collected Company or Court of Calling plan that the old Abzan Company decks did as well. Yes. Uh, I think Brad was only playing six of the mana creatures, but I didn't like having two Viserys Seers. It just feels like a worse card to draw off the top if you don't have that kind of combo set up. But yeah, the mana creatures are great. Uh, Devoted Druid is just a backup mana creature on turn two, which you kind of always want in your opening hand to really get ahead, especially if you're on the draw in this kind of format. But no, I mean, it's been performing very well as far as I've been testing it. Uh, I think, you know, this is like the new hotness. I walked around the room a bunch and of the decks I expected to see, this is probably either one or two in my books as far as what the most played deck will be uh, with the Death Shadow and maybe Eldrazi Tron or just similar things we haven't seen like Dredge in a while, but no, the format I think is really at this new place of uh, healthiness where we have a bunch of different options. Sure, there's some inherent degenerateness to it, sure. but it's a creature-based deck that requires the summoning sick creature to be on summoning sick. Not as bad as, you know, the Feller Guardian thing is in standard, but similar in that regard, but there's more interaction in modern. We have Lightning Bolt, so. If you're playing a modern and can't win when your opponent has a creature that you have a turn to kill. Yeah. Zero two on turn two, go. If you've got nothing, then you deserve to lose that yeah. game. Uh, some other cards running around in here. We have a Fiend Hunter and Scavenge Goose. These are your only mm -hmm. real targets in the main deck. Uh, talk about why these are the two options. Um, Fiend Hunter is just a general answer card to any creature that you might not want to like play against. In the mirror match, it's very good. Death Shadow enters that for a turn, which can be really relevant because they use a lot of the removal very early. Um, 
any other creature decks. Just a, a creature you can't beat. Yeah, you just try and get rid of it. You have something to interact that way. Uh, I was playing a Kosali Pride Mage leading up to this week, but uh, due to the popularity of, I think, what the Mirror will be, as well as Death Shadow, like the one, two decks, I think, uh, I think Ooze is better against those two decks than the other one, where Scavenging Ooze plays a big role in the Mirror match at shutting off Eternal Witness from helping you combo, as well as stopping the Infinite Life combo as well. So playing dual roles there, and I think just, you know, a singular threat if the game comes down to that, where they have enough to parry your combo is good. Right, we've kind of seen the Scavenging Ooze strategy just in the old school yeah. Jun decks, where it's just like, be the last person to stick a yep. creature. If it's scavenging news, it's going to be out of control. And now we also have the green man in the world, too, if you want to eat everything. That so. is true. No graveyard once you have all the green mana. They don't need it. Uh, we also have some utility lands here. You have the two Gavin Township. We've right. seen this in the old Abzan Company decks. You have a bunch of yeah. mana, a bunch of little creatures. You might as well make use of it. But you also have free Horizon Canopy here to just kind of chew through your deck. I wish I could play four, but I think the life loss would be too much. Um, you are a combo deck. And having your lands double as a cantrip uh, is very relevant. Often with the infinite life combo, um, sometimes you have like the infinite life part, but you also, and you also have the devoted druid going with infinite mana, which happens occasionally. But at that point, you can use the canopy to sack after you suck your deck with scries for the missing piece or something like that. But just a card you can cash in late in the game. I am playing 11 mana creatures between Hyrax, Birds, and devoted druid. You kind of want not to flood as much. You yeah. know, that can happen. But uh, no, it's been great. I would play a fourth if I could, but I don't think you can afford the life as much in the format as you used to be able to. So. All right, a couple questions here about the format and the deck in general. Mm. What are you, obviously you're a no on the Seaman Spirit Guide. What do you think of your thoughts on that card in this type of deck? I think it is good if you're expecting to play against a lot of mirror matches and combo decks, but against a more fair field of people trying to kill creatures uh, or just Death Shadow in general, I think it's not as good there. Um, it's obviously great in the mirror match because you get ahead of them. You can be on the draw and kill them before they can do, kill you with the Devoted Druid. But I want all my cards to do things normally, and I think having extra mana dorks and extra, you know, utility creatures and more Eternal Witness, four Eternal Witness in the deck, just to make sure you can be redundant with what you're doing, I think it's pretty key in that regard. But, uh, no, it, I can see why people would play it. People also advocated for Ronus, mm -hmm. uh, which similarly combos with infinite mana, and it's also a Coco hit is the big argument for it, where yeah. Ballista is not. But I feel like it doesn't do enough in most matchups where it's relevant. I guess it's better against Death Shadow a little bit, because they can't really kill it, and you know, maybe you have like a thinks that something you can buff to turn it on, but it's sketchy enough to where I don't really like it. But well, speaking of Death Shadow, that's question number two because that's the big deck coming mm -hmm. into this weekend. Right. It's the proven strategy. You know, it was in the hands of the Team Open win. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have come out this week talking about this deck's kind of weak to Death Shadow. What are your thoughts on the matchup, and why do you think this is the deck to be on this week? I think this version might be a little bit weaker than some of the. Uh, you can accommodate for the matchup, I should say if you want to. Um, cards that people have issued in this kind of version, like Voice of Resurgence, uh, I'm not playing Renegade Rallyer. Those two cards are like the really big ones against Death Shadow because obviously the plan is to kill everything or serve it from your hand. And Renegade Rallyer kind of brings everything back and Voice plays like much more to your normal game plan. They're also a big threat at some point. They do do a lot of damage to themselves. At some point, if you just draw a Township, the game ends because you have a bunch of random creatures, Township activate, attack you with all my creatures, hope you're dead. And like, that comes up a bit, but as far as being weak to that deck, I'm not sure how true that is. You have a bunch of Eternal Witnesses and Kitchen Pinks, which can be annoying. Multiple ways to combo. They can't beat the Infinite Life, typically. Mm -hmm. So that's also the, like a, a check mark there in the book, where sometimes the Infinite Life isn't good enough, but in that matchup it is. So I think it's a close matchup. I think it favors play draw quite a bit. Um, being able to get on the board quicker is obviously great, because if, if they spend their turns answering your threats instead of playing one of theirs, uh, that just you know gets you ahead to play a normal game plan and collect a company. Collect a company is just the best card in that matchup, uh, just because it's like a value card. and. You know, if you Coco into an Eternal Witness, you probably are going to be good enough yeah. if you're not like under extreme pressure. But you have all of the tools to grind with them in that case. Yes. Yeah. You can so do that forever, yeah. We'll go to the sideboard here. You have kind of your removal spells, du jour, you know, Path to Exile, Abrupt Decay to kind of answer things. But then you have this long list of tutor targets that these kind of decks have had for a while. Right. Most of these are kind of usual suspects, but we can go over some of the ones that are more rare in the scenario. We got Big Game Hunter. Right. You know, we have Selfless Spirit and Eidolon of Rhetoric. Right. Eidolon of Rhetoric, uh, concession to Storm. Um, it's reasonable against the Living End because it stops them casting the Living End uh, if you really want to fight that kind of fight. Um, I wouldn't bring any into Snapcaster decks really, but it also stops maybe like Karkman Ironworks decks, which I don't know if that's a thing or not, but I think I saw like Ben They Dada, are a thing. Like Ben Rubin playing it earlier, I think it was, I saw in the well, like feature match areas. But, um, no, Eidolon's great. Big Game Hunter helps against the uh, Aldrazi decks, 
which the Bant Eldrazi is not that bad, but the Eldrazi Tron's kind of bad because they have Ballista, like a big problem for you. All is dust. That's like a nightmare card for you to see. Um, but yeah, help fighting that matchup, having a shooter target for there when you might play a normal game. That's pretty good. Uh, what was the other card you said? Uh, the, Selfless Spirit. Uh, that's taking the slot of what I would have Spell Spellskite under. Um, they serve similar function against a card like uh, Fatal Push, Lightning Bolt, and all that kind of thing. Granted, uh, Bolt, you know, they can't kill the Spell Spellskite with a Bolt. But it wrecks against sweepers like Anger the Gods, which is a big deal. I think uh, I think a traditional matchup that this deck is not very good against is the Titan Breach deck or the you know the Escape Shift deck. They board like up to four Angers, and you want to have a guy that protects your board is pretty important when you're trying to get a summoning sick creature through the turn sometimes. All right, well, most of these uh, are kind of usual suspects we mm. see here: Phyrexian Revoker, Revoker, Pride Mage, yep. Pontiff, yep. Tidal of the Skuller, and then Lumbala. But then you also have a, Lin <laughs> a Liliana Last Hope Blast hanging out in here too. I love the card. I mean, I play it too much in Standard. Uh, I wasn't going to play it until last night. I was uh, testing a little bit with Steve Mann uh, for a bit, and he was like, it's like the perfect Jun card. And in the mirror match, it seems really good. Granted, it can't kill Devoted Druid, but it can like pick off mana creatures, uh, make blocking with things awkward, uh, and like kind of function as an eternal witness in some regards for creatures, while also being a removal spell in the mirror match. I don't know if it's good. It's my fun for the weekend. I'm, I'm enjoying playing it uh, and testing, and uh, I want to play a fun card. All right, well, we're in round two here. You're coming off your two buys because you're in the top 16 of the leaderboard. Yep. What are, you, uh, what are your expectations for this weekend and what do you kind of hope to see? I just hope to have fun. Uh, I don't mind if I get crushed. It's modern, crazy things can happen, but I think this is the least crazy it's been in a while, aside from this deck, which, again, vulnerable to most removal spells. Uh, there's no, like, you know, the banning of, like, a taxi and probe helped against infects. You don't have to worry about dying on turn three or two as often. That kind of thing. So I'm... I'm just looking to have fun. Uh, this deck's a blast to play. I was just playing it if you've ever tried it before. There's so many decisions you can do, just, uh, aside from just comboing people. So uh, I'm excited just, just to play some games. All right, well, Brennan, thanks for joining me here in the sideboard. Everyone at home, stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Baltimore.